<laughs> oh, I do have him. <laughs> yeah, I did have Oh, I still got him. <laughs> Lucky don't mess with that fish. Well, get out of there. That fish is still on there. He's just down in the weeds. Let's see. Come here. Come here, fish. Come here. Yeah, I still got him. Gotta pull through the weeds. There you are. There you go. He's ducking. I'm <laughs> lucky you had your chance, man. He fell off right in your mouth. <laughs> too bad. You was too slow, and my dog just ruined my good fishing right there. There's something that's working this edge. Let's drop one right on the edge of the reeds. There we go. This is down and dirty. Boom, there he is. Another whopper. <laughs> Very good luck you trying to get to that fish. Ooh, there's a real whopper. Hell, that might have been born this year. <laughs> that, that, that might be a fall baby. All right, goodbye. Thanks for coming. Definitely a good one. Definitely a good fly. Stumbled upon a combination of foam and book size and legs and all the things that matter on these spider type flies. That's a number 12. I think my number 10. I've been having the most success with a number 10. I had gone to a number 8. But a number 10 seems to be the trick. It's the right size for the fish in my pond to get in their mouth. I had far less misses. If the fish is big enough, it will get the hook in the mouth. Now, I am going to make one minor adjustment in this particular fly I'm tying right now, and that's to make it a little bit smaller. Alright, get that nice and centered. Lock it in. Grab some thread. I happen to have the chartreuse handy, so I'm going to use it. Thread up the hook. Come back to about the point. I'm going to go ahead and tie in some of this green stuff. I don't know what to call this. I don't know what it's called. It's just that fuzzy stuff. I'm going to go ahead and roll forward to about right here. Wrap this counterclockwise to my thread. That's about enough. I'm going to trap it. You don't need too much of this, so if you have just a little ball of it, that's going to be enough. That stuff effectively came unwrapped. <laughs> it's alright. Don't matter. I'm going to go with uh, with uh, tan because that's the color that seemed to work best. I'm going to cut a piece about as long as the hook. So about right here. That's a piece about as long as the hook. You don't need a very big piece. Oop little piece like this and I'm going to take my super glue hope that didn't lay face down okay here we go and we're making progress fold this thing in half and sandwich it together see that sandwich it together now I got this it's going to go up on top makes for a prettier fly Basically, you just give it two pointed heads. A little bit in the middle. Kind of a little rocking chair arm thing. See? It's like that. Alright. We're going to position it just like this. I want this end 
even with the back of the hook bend. I'm going to do a bunch of ties like this. Slowly but surely cinch it down. We're going to move our thread. Actually, let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right, we got that. Now I'll get my silly legs. Clumsy giant fingers, there's one. And we're going to tie this on here. To one side, bring it up and over. Now that side. Go ahead and even it up. That's pretty close. We'll get another one. And if you want to get them even the first time, what you do is you put it on the string, you line up the ends, you grab both ends, and you walk it up on the thread. And there we go. Okay. A couple of times through here, through the center, one behind, one ahead. And then move the thread back to here, to this point. Now if you want, you can give this thing a bigger head. One right here. Oop. Give it quite a few wraps. It seems to stay up on top of the hook better for me when I do it this way. Alright, we got the second segment put together line those up on the end hold them together bring it around hold that down like that go ahead and get another line up the ends pull them tight bring it to there go ahead and get the other legs out of the way couple of times through the legs and you know what that is probably good enough pull it back get up underneath here and do a couple half hitches and then go ahead and cut your thread leave just a little teeny tiny end on it that way you can take your super glue that does not want to cooperate anymore. Take your needle, put it down inside there, get a little dab on the end. What I did on the last one that, that I believe made a difference was I took these legs. Well, first I'm going to color them up. tight there now we're gonna put a little drop of super glue on here little eyeballs and I'm gonna slide it off this paper which that's the first time I had one flip over on me and I'm gonna put a eyeball on this little critter Right there. All right, now we're gonna do the other side. And believe me, I don't care if they're not perfectly even because this is crazy. There we go. Put the eyeball on him. Now, Here's the one thing I think makes a difference. These front legs, they don't need to be that long. They need to be about that long. And this long. And that long. And that long. And this long that long there see that one's a little little too long mm. there. see now that is a cool 
looking fly. The head's going to turn black because when that super glue hits that green sharpie marker, it turns black. You got eyeballs and everything. Let's back it up. Here we go. Now you can see what it looks like. Got two long legs on the back and three six long legs on the front, but they're but they're much shorter than the the other part of the fly. That is a good pattern. It has proven itself already easy to make. I showed you how to tie one of those. Made some extras. Little different techniques on them. That's just streamer, streamer, bug, whatever. Those are the foam bugs with eyeballs. Folks, this is what I used the last time. I was here and I mean I did really well bass and the brim were hitting it like mad I made a slightly smaller version same size hook but a much smaller version you can see it's it's probably a three-eighths of an inch difference and I think that's gonna matter I think this fly is gonna work really well let me get it on there and see if my theory is right there you go. This is the perfect fly. I caught a nice one last night. Hybrid sunfish, hybrid, a uh, green hybrid sunfish. Green sunfish hybridized with something real pretty. Had an interesting looking ear flap. There he is. Oh man, one made a rush at it. He's sitting right underneath it. <laughs> Last night it didn't take any time to catch fish. I got down here now it was probably eight o'clock already. I'll show you that picture of that green sunfish. That was impressive. Beautiful fish. Wow. Yeah, starting to think my theory's wrong. <laughs> Drop one on this side. Boom. Did you see that fish? Holy smokes. Come on, fish. I just had my fly over there and you didn't want it. What the heck? This is right about prime time, so if they're not here, they may be out deeper. Good night. Oh, I pulled it away from him. Bass are working the shallows a little bit. Boom, there he is. <laughs> Just had to let him sit there and look at it forever. Not lucky here. There's nobody here to eat this fish. Or try to. Ooh, that fish is getting thin. It is thin, thin, thin. I got too many fish in here. I got to start getting rid of them. I need to get my aerated barrel put together so I can fill it up with water and put it in the back of the truck. At least take them up to the front pond. I need to get their numbers reduced, especially the bass. That fly lays real nice in the water. Those back legs are spreading out just fine. It's got a nice profile to it. There's a fish. Another bass. He just slurped it. He just slurped it. Oh, that one's, that one's a little hefty. He's been eating good. He's been getting enough to eat. He's a little fatty. Oh, he's got whacked. Probably blue heron. I was pretty sure them cows would be up here today. Now I want to drink of water. Boom. Boy, these fish are just jumping all over this thing over here. 
They were in a hurry to get to that water. Come in and get a drink of water. Got a little bass or sunfish. A little sunfish. All right, they're getting busy. They were just waiting for the cows to come up here. See right there. I got a fish on, but that's a snake. That's a black snake. It might actually be a water moccasin. It's awful black. Hmm. Let me see if I can get a better. I got a great big giant sunfish on here. Ooh, yeah. Wow, that's the biggest one I've caught in several days. That is a brute. Wow. That's the biggest ones we got in the pond right there. I'm pretty sure that's a water moxin down there. Goodbye, fish. Thanks for coming. I don't have anything in the truck that I could dispatch that snake with. Hmm. I could cut him right in half if I had something with me. Another fishy fishy. He's like a big old sunfish, because now he's down in the weeds. Come on out of there. Come on out of there. What do we got? Another big sunfish. I don't dare go too far down there, because that snake's right there. And up. That's a normal size sunfish. He just happened to have a lot of weeds on him. Now I bonked that snake, the part that was showing on the edge there, I smashed it. He went in the water. I know he's hurting. I am almost positive that was a water moccasin. He's not happy. Okay. Well. That's enough for one evening. I caught a cup. I caught a big sunfish, which is the part I'm after. Several bass, fly works. It wasn't great this evening, but I have found that when it's cloudy and the the light levels just fade real slowly, it's not quite as intense once it gets dark. Even though without that snake, I probably would have fished a little longer. But I popped him. He's hurting.